Hello guys, this is Code and Code, and this is 24th lecture of Number Theory series. It's been a while while we have had any lecture from Number Theory series, so we are going to start it, and I'll be posting three or four lectures uh, regarding this related to this primality test. But this time we'll be going with non-deterministic primality test algorithms. Previously, we have already studied one algorithm which tests whether a given prime num uh, whether a given number n is prime or not in square root of n time that algorithm is deterministic and what is the difference between deterministic and non-deterministic primary uh, primality test algorithm we'll be seeing in a moment so what is deterministic and non-deterministic primary uh, algorithm so basically deterministic primary test algorithm returns whether the given number n is prime or not with 100 percent accuracy while non-deterministic primary test algorithm will run and test a number n whether it is prime or not with certain small very small amount of error with it like uh, this one we have already seen which returns uh, this deterministic algorithm is what we always have been using and it returns whether it is prime or not whether n is prime or not in square root of n time but now we need to study non-deterministic primality test algorithm the question is if there are some errors uh, in the result of non-deterministic primality test algorithms like formats or uh, rabin miller algorithm then why we are even studying those algorithms well the reason is actually square root of n running time is really really sl slow uh, let me show you one or two examples then you'll understand what i'm saying see here there is a problem from spot p o n prime or not the question ask question is very very simple as you can see this is a single one line question the question says you are given an integer n and all you have to do is check whether it is prime or not simple right now you can see there are t test cases t can be as large as 500 but the problem rises here as you can see n can be as large as 2 raised to the power 63 minus 1 basically 64 bit integer which means the value can be as large as 10 raised to the power 19 roughly so if the value of n is roughly 10 to the power 19 square root of it would be uh, roughly 9 point something 10 raised to the power 9 point something so uh, 10 to the power 9 let's assume it is 10 to the power 9 so in one second uh, it is not even going to test for a single prime and here we are having 500 primes to test uh, whether they are prime or not we have 500 numbers to test whether they are prime or not and the uh, worst thing about this is that uh, in the worst case all of the 500 numbers can be as large as 10 to the power 19 so now you might be thinking oh, this is a tough problem uh, for those who already know these algorithms non-deterministic algorithms they already know how to solve this and one suggestion for you when you're solving some problem on spot uh, usually you are not going to get any editorial for this usually you know, there are some people who post editorial for uh, problems from spot like me i mean i'm great uh, so if you're solving a problem from spot you can and you are stuck at some point you can always go there and read the comments most likely you will get an answer to what algorithm you need to use uh, as you can see here this guy tells, uh, tells you that you need to use miller rabin test this is one of the solution of course there are other uh, methods like fermat or miller whatever you want you can use so uh there is an interesting comment yeah this guy got ac in 2.68 seconds using formats theorem and one more thing where is the time limit yeah here is the time limit time time limit for this problem is 21 seconds so pretty large time limit yeah so this is the problem where test case can be as large as uh, 500 and numbers can be as large as 10 to the power 19 and of course the deterministic algorithm will result in tle because square root of n is still going to result in TLE. So this is one of the problem, right? Now the other problem is this. This was in, uh, this one I found more interesting than the previous one. The problem is from hacker rank, and the problem is prime sum. As you can see, difficulty level medium, and the score is seventy. Now the question again is very simple. You are given an integer a. Oh, uh, sorry. You are given an integer n as well as k you have to tell whether n can be represented as sum of k prime numbers they do not need to be distinct but they have to be k 
k they have to be k prime numbers such that their sum is equals to n if there exist k k prime such that their sum is equals to k print yes otherwise print no like this this is the question now see here the test cases are 5000 and n and k can be as large as 10 power 12 again the problem and here the time limit won't be more than one second i believe i do not know whether they mentioned time time limit or not but i think it won't be more than one second so uh, this one is more interesting than the previous one uh, you can try and solve this problem yourself but here 5000 even though square root of n is like 10 plus 6 but still you won't be able to solve this problem using the standard deterministic primality test algorithms and yeah the link for the these two problems i'll be providing into the uh, description of this video so now you know why non-deterministic algorithms are needed uh, because they are very very fast like Fermat's uh, Fermat's primality test is like uh, can determine whether a number is prime or not in log n time so these are pretty fast so that is why we need non-deterministic primality test algorithms even though there are some errors what you can do you can uh, run the test again and again and again the more you i you basically you can use more iteration the more iterations you use the better is the probability or uh, the probability of error reduces so we'll be studying this non-deterministic algorithms there are two non-deterministic algorithms that we'll be studying first is going to be of course uh, i think i have this in my yeah i think i needed to explain all of that now after this slide but i have explained already that so basically why do we need to learn non-deterministic primary test algorithm so if you have sort of question like there are q queries queries can be as large as 10 for 5 each time you are given a number n which can be as large as 10 for 12 so you have to print whether the given number is prime or not this question you can solve of course using non-deterministic uh, primality test algorithms only you can't use deterministic because uh, at best i think the best that we have known so far is square root of n and that is going to result tle for this problem and the other reason i have already explained there are two uh, these are the two reasons two more reasons and in fact there are much more problems which cannot be solved using using deterministic primality test algorithm so of course we need to know about non-deterministic uh, non-deterministic primality test algorithms and that is what we are going to cover in this mini series you can consider this as mini series for uh, for non-deterministic primality test algorithms yeah what algorithms we are going to cover first we are going to cover Fermat's primality test algorithm uh, this is in my best knowledge this is the simplest one this is the simplest non-deterministic primality test algorithm which completely depends upon Fermat's little theorem if my uh, you might already know about this we have already talked about this this is Fermat's little theorem for prime numbers now for prime p and any number a which is co-prime to p basically gcd of a and p should be one a raised to power p minus 1 is congruent to 1 modulo p this is Fermat's little theorem for p when when p is equals uh, when p is actually a prime and this is the fact that Fermat's primality test is completely based on and yeah uh, the reference for the lecture series for this mini lecture series would be this uh, cpalgorithms.com the, the article on cpalgorithms.com the link of this article i'll be also providing in the description of the video even though i want uh, more views on my video but still as a teacher uh, this is my first and the most this is my priority to provide you all of the references so that you can study yourself so if you are more of a reading guy than a watching guy you can uh, i'll be providing link of this article in the description of, it, of the video so you do not have to watch the other lectures which will follow this lecture if you want to continue yourself if you want to read yourself uh, uh, i think this the primality test uh, format primality test is very very easy you can study from here as well even though i'll be making video on this but if you want you can read from here as well and even the miller rabin test is explained pretty well uh, and also the code is provided here so if you want to read only instead of watching video you can do that as well i'll be providing the link of this 
article in the uh, in the description of the video so first thing we are will be learning is formats little uh formats primality test and then we'll be going for uh mirror rabin primality test which is a little a slight improvisation on the uh format primality test this also depends upon formats little theorem and after that we'll be seeing how the middle uh, miller rabin primary test uh, even though this is non deterministic but we'll see how miller rabin primality test can can work as deterministic primality test for 32 and 64 bit integers we are not going beyond 64 bit integer because we do not need to go because in most of the uh, competitive programming problems i haven't seen uh, any problem where i need to decide i need to check whether the n, uh, number n is prime or not and n can be as uh, n can be above 64 bit integer i haven't seen uh, any problem like that so we'll be restricting ourselves to 32 and 64 bit integer for deterministic miller rabin test so this miller rabin test which runs in log n time depending upon how you implement uh, certain parts of it which are easy to implement uh, depending on that it can uh, in log n time decide whether the given number n is prime or not so we'll be studying all of these three algorithms so so this is the overall overview of this mini series first we'll be studying farmer's primality test it would require one or two lectures because in, uh, for farmer's primality test in fact for all of the primality test problems i'll be considering three things first uh, i'll be explaining how why this works then implementation and solving the problem prime or not from spot and we'll see whether this this algorithm can solve this problem or not then one or two lecture will require one or two lecture for a uh, miller rabin primary test as well again we'll see why this works how this works and implementation of it and then we'll try to solve the problem pon again on a uh, spot and finally we'll be studying the deterministic version of a uh, miller rabin test for 64 bit integers and again we'll test it for this problem and yeah i'll be uh, making a video editorial for this problem as well even though uh, this problem is easy to understand why once you unlock the editorial or if you want to if you want to watch the video of course you can because i'll be making an editorial for that problem as well so this is the overview of this mini series and after that you will be able to understand completely and you'll be able to run the miller rabin test as well as format little theorem uh, formats uh, uh, primary test yourself after this mini series and of course what is the next lecture what is what to do in the meantime of course the next lecture is going to be firmus primary test and meantime you can go and study yourself and try to solve these two problems yourself this un problem and this uh prime sum problem yourself and i'll be providing this article link in the description of the video so then uh, so that uh, till i release the next video you can study from here and if you just want to study from this you can do that as well so this was all for this lecture your suggestions are more than welcome and Thank you guys for watching and till the next video drops keep coding. Thank you.